Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Joan and Janet are subtle energy empaths in the field of consciousness. Their passion is to support your evolutionary growth and change. Join them as they talk about our individual and collective evolutions. Explore what living consciously with energetic awareness means in our daily lives. Access with them a state of grace. There is no time, no space. Feel the warmth and acceptance and opening into infinite possibilities. Combining a broad collection of modalities and personal experiences, they share with humility and humor their appreciation for the body, mind, spirit connections that we call life. Now, here is Joan Newcomb and Janet Barrett. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. We're your co-hosts, Joan Newcomb, coming to you from Tacoma, Washington, and my partner, Janet Barrett, coming to you from Portland, Oregon. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today on Conscious Conversations, we are talking with our guest, Colleen Morrow, and she's the author of Spiritual Telepathy, Ancient Techniques to Access the Wisdom of Your Soul. Colleen introduces us to a more advanced form of intuitive perception that allows us to access the wisdom and guidance of our own souls and beyond that to the universal or divine mind. A pioneer in the revolution of consciousness, she is the founder and editor-in-chief of Intuition, a magazine for the higher potential of the mind, exploring the many and varied ways of knowing of knowing in an easy-to-read form for the general reader. In the past, only special people, saints, shamans, and spiritual leaders had consistent access to higher worlds. But the tide of evolution has brought us to the point where many of us now can take this important step. And when we do, we become the pioneers in the next stage of human development. And her website is spiritualtelepathy.net. And we're delighted to have her join us in the conversation. And I heard someone take a breath, and I bet that was Janet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, I just want to welcome Colleen and let everybody know that you can call in today if you like at one 627 6008 if you have any questions as we have our conversation. And we're just so uh, happy that you're with us, Colleen. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, we're going to have a lot of things. Do we need to get our announcements out of the way, Joan, and then we'll get dive into life? Yes. Why don't we talk really fast and get our announcements out of the way? But we have some <laughs> exciting things coming up, too, that, that ways that people can connect with us outside of the show, ways that uh, folks can see us. Uh, I will start with the show is on Facebook. You can go to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Joan and Janet. We have a monthly uh, conference call that you can join us in a more intimate space. Uh, our next one is on Thursday, March the 17th, and you can email at us, us at ConsciousWithJoanAndJanet at gmail.com. We are also going to be at Emerald Spirals Expo on March 26th, and this is up in Washington State at Kent Commons, and there's more information at emeraldspiral.com. We're also going to be at the Body, Mind, Spirit Expo in Portland from April 2nd to 3rd, and you can find out more at www.bmse.net. Um, my website is joan-nukem.com. I have a lot of stuff going on there. We, I have uh, meetups around the Puget Sound. I do YouTube videos twice a week, uh, and I write a re weekly blog and newsletter. And Janet, your website is? Janet and beyond.com and you can email me at Janet B at Janet and beyond if you like we also I also host uh, meetup groups here at my home Tuesdays and Thursdays and you can check out meetup.com for conscious conversations with Janet or consciousness playground and find out more and come we have a wonderful time and we're all Joan and I are all about sharing with those around us who want to want to have more awareness in their life about how they are and uh, we enjoy meeting everyone we do and we're looking forward to our events coming up but also our weekly adventures in our communities are a whole lot of fun so please join us there very cool so yeah. we got to talk we got to talk to colleen now we do <laughs> i'm here colleen okay i'm great. here <laughs> right. okay. you know you have to always get the business out of the way for the pleasure i, I mean do. 
Sorry. So you've you've been at this business a long time. Right. What is it you want to share with us today? We'll we'll drop into Heartspace after our commercial and do our conversation. But give us tempt us now. Tell us what what mm-hmm. you're out to share with us today. Well, I published uh, Intuition Magazine, as you know. It started mm-hmm. in the 1980s, and I ran it until the year 2000. And this is um, a time all through the 90s that we taught people to develop and honor their basic intuition. And their personal intuition gives us information about our, our, our basically our personal lives, our work, our relationships, and so on. And after I folded the magazine, I started to study the Ages Wisdom teachings, and I was immediately intrigued by the subject of spiritual telepathy. And I realized that this was the next step, that this is a higher level of spiritual perception that puts us into direct contact with our souls, that it really is a higher level of intuitive perception. And really what we did in the 90s kind of laid the foundation for this more advanced work. And I got very excited about it and spent years studying it and finally wrote the book. Got it. Well, I think for our listeners, we're, we reference consciousness all the time in consciousness technologies. And so it sounds like this is dovetailing right into that, would you say? Are you Absolutely. Familiar? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're all kind of at the same starting space. Yeah. What are you noticing, Joan? Um, I am noticing a lot of curiosity about what her spiritual telepathy is, and I'd love to hear her talk more. So, Janet, is this an appropriate time to ask her that question and dive into that, or should we hold that for being in hard space? You know, um, let me see. I think we're just so ready to get into it today, aren't we? (laughs) (laughs) I think we're, I think things are just poppy. That's the way the universe is working this morning, certainly. So I don't know. Should we get our commercial break maybe done early and then get into things? How about that? Does that work at all? That, that that that's fine. That's fine with all of us. <laughs> all right. Let's all right. see if our sound engineer is there too. <laughs> well, so we have to stop for a commercial break, but stay tuned as we're talking about spiritual telepathy with Colleen Morrow right after the break. Maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, in case we don't take the break right as we expected um what should we talk about <laughs> this is interesting what a day colleen do you sometimes have days like that do you think yeah i'd love to tell a story about the magazine and how uh that got started because that illustrates spiritual telepathy okay Lisa. okay so are we ready to go to a break then uh mm, yes because we're ready to right. tell stories but how long's the break? break how long's the break just a couple. Just, just like a minute. Like two minutes. Are you ready to take a quantum leap in your life? Joan Newcomb is a conscious mastery coach who empowers you to navigate life from your own inner wisdom using energy techniques. Contact her through her website, joan-newcomb.com, and take conscious mastery of your life today. That's joan-newcomb.com. You are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm Joan. I'm out here with Janet, and we are here with Colleen Morrow talking about spiritual telepathy. Oh, go ahead. What? What? Okay, this is interesting, and this is live, and this is what happens when you allow yourself to respond to what's flowing, and we can feel that there's a lot of bumps out there, which is kind of fun, and Colleen, uh, usually what we do is we'll drop into heart space and then have our conversation for there. Does that feel appropriate for what you want to share with us? Sure. All righty. Well, let's do that, everyone. And because we're really, I can feel that we want to get into what this is going to be all about today. Um, Let's see. So everybody, just take a breath and stop, whatever it is, that point of awareness that you can hold with us and let the rest of it go. There you go. There we go. And what it's like just 
to be able to access your inner world. And we do it through calling it the field of the heart, unified consciousness, mind, whatever your language might be. But just take this moment to be with us. There we go. And just go inward or outward, however your sense of yourself is and your sense of connection to heart is. You can do it through a physical sense of the heart. And so notice and be appreciative of that wonderful mechanism that's there for you with every beat, with every breath. There we go. It feels like we've been running. So we don't need to run anymore. We're here. So notice the emotional terrain and how colorful that might be or full of symbols or however it is that your sensory mechanisms are offering you the emotional terrain today. And just let it be. Don't judge it. Don't be in denial of it. Just allow it to be. There's a breath. That's good. And then just allow yourself to let whatever deepen into that core essence of all, which is also the meaning of heart. And this is where we're just the bits and pieces floating in that wonderful infinite sea of potential. Where we are just information and resonances. And we're all one. We lose our distinctions. There is no separateness. It's just consciousness. And as you allow yourself to just let that be real. There we go. And we're going to feel the broad spectrum today because Colleen, our guest, is bringing us lots of different uh, references. And Joan has a great body of references. And I have some references too. So we'll put those all in the mix with all of you, our listeners, because there is no time, there is no space in this reality of heart. And we'll get to see what today shows up. Colleen, tell us a little bit about, you said you wanted to talk a bit about the magazine. So, Well, I'd like to talk about how the magazine came into being because it's such a great illustration of the, the experience that I'm writing about. Mm-hmm. I had always been interested in the spiritual world and intuitive studies. And in the late 80s, I was living in San Francisco, and I had worked for a number of alternative magazines. And I suddenly found myself without a job. And I was a little bit stumped as to what to do next because I had already worked for all the magazines I liked. So (laughs) I spent my days researching new magazines and worrying about money. It's so expensive to live there and kind of driving myself crazy. And one morning I woke up and I decided that I needed to take a mental health day, excuse me, and that I would uh, go out and plant some bulbs and just putter around in my garden. It was October and that's my favorite month in San Francisco. So I was out in the backyard really enjoying myself. And I had a a type of intuitive experience that I'd never had before. A a thought just suddenly flashed through my mind. And the thought was the Center for Applied Intuition. And I had always accessed intuition through feelings or some kind of body-based sensation. But this was a purely mental experience. It felt like the words had been just dropped right into my brain. And I immediately knew that it wasn't my thought. And it certainly made no logical sense. I knew about the Center. I had met the founder, Bill Kautz. But I couldn't imagine why I would go there to look for a magazine job. He had a two-room office, and I knew that he ran intuition trainings. He sent intuitives out to do business consulting. And I couldn't imagine what, what there would be there for me other than some sort of administrative position. And so I mulled it over for a few days, and then I thought, well, what have I got to lose? So I called him up, and I asked him to send me information about the center's activities. And a few days later, a large manila envelope arrived, and I dumped it out on my dining room table. And inside, there were several brochures and a very simple typewritten journal called Applied Psy. It was the quarterly publication that he sent out to the center's 200 members. And the journal was about the subjects of intuition and creativity. And as I looked through the pages, I thought, wow, this could be a real magazine. It would have to have a new name and we'd have to spiff it up quite a bit. 
But I thought these are really interesting subjects that would be of interest to a, an audience way beyond the center's small membership. So I called him up, made an appointment to speak with him. And when I arrived at the center, I, I sat him down and I pitched him on my idea. And he immediately lit up and told me that he had always dreamed of turning Applied Sci into a real magazine, but the right person had never come along. So I went home, banged out a proposal, came back the next day, and suddenly I was launching a new magazine. We called it Intuition, a magazine for the higher potential of the mind. And I got two issues out uh, before Bill closed the center and signed the rights over to me. And I later got a grant and set up an office. And when I think about it now, there are several very interesting things about this story. One, I never could have gotten there through rational process. It never would have occurred to me to, to go to him if I was looking for a magazine job. And two, I got something much better than what I was looking for. And, and three, that I couldn't have seen that in the next decade, there would be a flood of information on the subject and the magazine provided a focal point for it. So it, it's this exact experience where information is simply dropped into our brains. When we access the higher worlds, the soul or even higher worlds beyond the soul, the information is always communicated telepathically. It always lands right into our brains. We don't audibly hear the information. It just comes to us in that way. So this is really a perfect illustration of the concept of spiritual telepathy. And it was my paying attention and my willingness to act on it that really unfolded this whole new journey for me. Wow. Sounds good. What are you noticing, Joan? I am noticing that I was muted, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I I love that aspect of synchronicity, and mm -hmm. it and your ability to discern the information that dropped in as as different from your own, and to open up to uh, to receiving it and acting on it. Um, yeah. so, and especially when it's totally not what you expect. That's yeah. usually when it's the right thing, right? It's not the answer we want or expect in any way. So definitely. All right. I can feel that. So what's your book about then? That's well, the, the book is about how to actually do this, how to make that direct contact with the soul. And it's a process of meditation. It's the type of meditation that we call Raja Yoga or um, creative meditation. And mm -hmm. this type of meditation is a little bit different. Many meditation practices focus on just quieting the mind. And in this type of meditation, we actually go a step further. And we actively train the mind to transmit information from the soul to the brain. The information has to reach the brain to become part of our conscious awareness. And it's in the same way that our homes are wired for telephone and internet connection. This type of meditation allows us to create the threads and cables that link us to the higher worlds. And we create these cables by projecting our attention upward to the soul day after day. We visualize the soul as a star about six inches above our heads. And each time we do this, we anchor small threads of energy that eventually, thread by thread, form a symbolic bridge between the mind, the brain, and the soul. This bridge is mm. called the Rainbow Bridge or the Bridge of Light in the Wisdom Teachings. It's called the Antakarana in the Hindu text, and it's even in the Bible. It's called the Straight or Narrow Gate in the New Testament. And the source material for this book was very esoteric. And because of that, I thought very carefully about how I should present this material. I wanted it to reach an audience far beyond those that are already reading esoteric books. So I was very careful with the language I used. And I also did a lot of research. I looked for the parallels in other spiritual traditions and found that they're absolutely everywhere, that this teaching forms the mystical core of all of our great religions. So I found it everywhere in Buddhism and Hinduism and Sufism and pre-Christian mm -hmm. traditions and so on. And so it was really wonderful to, to research this and to see how universal this was. And I think it's really important. And it's the reason I put so much time into this and just sort of kept doggedly carrying on because I really think that it's the next step that what we did in the 90s provided the foundation now for this more uh, advanced work. Got it. How has it changed your life? It's changed my life tremendously. And that's one Tell thing I'm more. Talk about because too. I think that's what listeners want to know. You know, we can we can read something, we can have something, but it's like, well, how do I connect to that? Right. It's that point of connection. How did this how did how did doing this make you who you are today? 
Well, at the end of our daily meditation, we ask that the soul uh, pour light down over our lower bodies to calm our minds, emotions, and uh, invigorate our physical body. And it's the daily contact with the light of the soul that starts to raise our vibration. And our spiritual evolution seems to speed up. I noticed that my heart was more open, that I had more peace and joy in my life, and a more consistent source of guidance. When I need information, I can sit down and ask the soul and get clear guidance, which is something that never was um, in my life before. It was always kind of more of a vague kind Mm. of um, Mm. experience that I wasn't sure was true or not. But now I feel that I do have this very consistent source of guidance and a very uh, much more clear understanding of the contribution that I can make to the world. And so I think that we all have some contribution to make and really getting in touch with our higher purpose and looking at ways that we can play this out is really the greatest joy of all. So it's, it's really had a huge, huge impact on my life. I always thought that making contact with the soul was something that would happen to more evolved people. And I was really mm. surprised at how early I did feel a deepening connection to my soul. And the, the key really is consistency. It's something that we need to do every day. And it's not a long meditation. It, it's um, 10 to 15 minutes. But it's the consistent day after day that creates this bridge and creates this connection between the physical human self and the soul. Yes, and mm-hmm. I totally understand that doing it repetitively actually makes it more real to the body. So, mm-hmm. you know, what what you're describing is is a way of, of strengthening it and uh, to the body personality is the way I'd translate it, uh, the connection to, to the soul and being able to download that information more effortlessly. And, and I would look at that as you may get real. Mm-hmm. It's all about reality-based information. So mm-hmm. how are we holding that information? That it that it is available to you. It is available to each of us who take the time to pursue it and to look for it and to encourage it and develop it within ourselves. And it's not something you just do when you're at work or when you're at home. It's a, it's a way of living, right? Isn't that what this has become? It's how yeah. you are, who you are. Yeah, it's and, a daily practice. Yeah, and it's not... You know, and I think at some point it, you know, I hear people reacting to the word practice. And I think what we're saying is that this is just an extension of who you are. It doesn't have to be this formal ritual, which it certainly in training, that's, you know, that that has its meaning. But after a while, you know, it's like, oh, this is just who I am. This is what I do. This is, it's this natural state that you're always in that we're looking for. And uh, Joan and I are doing this all the time, right? Those of us who do consciousness, this is what it's about. This is what we want to everyone to understand is that um, it makes a difference in your life. If you're not dealing well or feel that you're dealing well or judging in some way, that you have the answers within you and how to connect to all of that is is where the joy is. Well, and and Janet, I'll chime in because I I was was actually a meditation teacher for like 30 years and I had a very rigid practice. Right. But it was was a practice, but the, the value of the practice was uh, like training the body to receive right. the information and, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 what I'm noticing nowadays is that no you don't need to meditate for two hours in order to do that it can be as effortless as 10 to 15 minutes is what sort of strengthens your spiritual muscles to receive the information and I also loved how you were you in in the intro to your book is you know in the past you had to be special for you know, or, or you know, huge amount of training as a shaman, in order uh, to to access this information. But what's been going on in our collective evolution nowadays is that this is accessible to everyone. So I think your book is so valuable to people out there because there's a lot of folks walking around, you know, having these kind of intuitions and spiritual openings in, but they're accountants and they're you know, or they're 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 engineers and so the, this is giving them a tool to be able to access their higher information um, at a time that we're just being flooded with, with downloads yeah I wanted it to be very step by step because books like this are usually presented in theory 
And mm-hmm. I wanted to have a book that anybody could pick up and start to utilize right away. And I like what you said about the special people. I've always wondered, why is it that only certain people could communicate with the higher worlds? And I've always felt very touched and envious when reading these stories. We know Joan of Arc talked to saints and angels. Eileen Caddy uh, received the guidance that led to the founding of the Finhorn community in Scotland. And I loved reading about the botanist George Washington Carver. He walked in the woods each morning to talk to God. And apparently Mm. God talked back. He called it the divine radio. And I've always wondered, why do only some people have these experiences? How can I do it? If saints and angels are looking for someone to talk to, I'm available. I was so long to have that in, that experience. And so it was exciting to me to read about this and to realize that with this um, training, we can all cultivate this ability. And when we do this, we become intermediaries between the physical and spiritual worlds, we can pull in high levels of wisdom and knowledge, both for our own lives and to be used in our service. So we essentially become the arms and legs of God, that we can bring in these higher levels and and, um, and use them. Uh, what comes to mind for me is that I have a feeling that more people than not have these experiences that you're talking about, but they just don't have a framework for noticing what it is. Mm-hmm. And so they poo poo it or they deny it or they brush it off. And, you know, how often has anyone ever said, oh, I had warning and I didn't pay attention or mm-hmm. something stepped in, you know, and it's in a culture that that we need to celebrate information that's not written down and that we don't see that it's whatever you want to call the unseen is that there's information everywhere showing up and we all have different skill sets and awarenesses of where that information is and it could be the bird talking to you or it could be the sun breaking out or it could be your neighbor or it could be the book you open up and there it is you know information is everywhere for us to pull on Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I, I I loved you mentioning about Eileen Caddy. Findhorn is a, uh, a special place in in my heart, and um, I actually uh, took uh, some classes with Dorothy McLean and had uh, some experiences of talking, working side by side with her and, and pulling blackberries bushes out and and making a request of the blackberry to release its roots. And the ones that I did that with you know, come out more quickly. So it was a wonderful sense of, of quickly, intuitively, you know, con- communicating with nature. And what I was thinking, you know, going back to the spiritual telepathy and the practice that you talk about is how important it is to, to, to raise the vibration of the body to be able to receive that information more. And, uh, and so a, a simple you know, daily practice like your book describes helps people handle this much higher information that is 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 flooding into the planet today. Uh, and you know, J- Janet just said too, it's like we don't we don't have the language, or we just we we can't. Uh, we're having inexplicable experiences of expansion. So uh, things like this, your book it, it is a wonderful tool for fo- folks right now. What I love about it is um, when we train our minds in this way. The mind becomes our own individual search engine. We have sort of our our own internal Google. It can Mm -hmm. extend extend (laughs) out into the cosmos, gather information, and then download that directly into our brains. So mediumship and channeling really becomes obsolete because we don't need the middleman. We can Mm -hmm. actually go and get the information ourselves, that it's all there. Exactly. I, I want to, I love, because I use that analogy of the cosmic internet and, and my belief is as essence, we are the cosmic internet and, you know, our bodies just happen to be the device that we're, we're using to receive the information in the physical. And uh, so my, my question is, is one of the things I have been noticing as this vibration has been going on, and I've had to upgrade all my ancient techniques because we've gone from dial-up to Wi-Fi. So uh, how does sort of the wireless analogy work with your techniques? Because it is all wireless. It's said that the soul is the portal to the universal or divine mind, and that when we access the soul, then we have we have access to all information, past, present, and future. And mm. one of the things that was very interesting to me in, in this research was to realize that this is what genius is. Mm-hmm. The wisdom teachings tell us that the portal, the soul is the portal, 
And what I discovered is that many of the people we call geniuses and visionaries talk about their creative process in exactly the way it's explained in the wisdom teachings. Willis Harmon, who was the former president of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, wrote this great book, I think it was in the 80s, called Higher Creativity. And in this book, he looked at the biographies of many artists, writers, composers, scientists, and inventors, and discovered that their greatest achievements came through an intuitive breakthrough. And I reread that book before I started to write mine. And then I went and looked at his original sources and checked out some of those books from the library. And one book was especially helpful. It was called Talks with Great Composers. It was written in the late 1800s and not published until the 1950s. The author had an agreement with Bronze not to publish until after he died. <laughs> and in this book, he interviewed Puccini, Brahms, Strauss, Wagner, and other well-known composers about the source of their creative genius. And again and again, they talked about the soul as the portal to a universal source of inspiration. Once they were connected to the source, ideas and images simply flowed into their brains. And I have many of these stories in the book. It was very exciting to see this the same language used over and over and over. And it became very clear that genius is not a rare and random event. It's something that we can cultivate that we all have the ability to make contact with the soul and through the soul access this higher level, that we have all the information we need for any book or project, and that um, many of the things that we consider classics and great inventions and scientific breakthroughs came from that level. They came from a higher level than what we can um, create with our rational minds. I, I love that it, because, yeah, universal consciousness is beyond time and space and mm -hmm. and and how confusing it would be to just go into that big cosmic soup. You know, we, we need a portal to help, uh, to help give us some definition. Of, uh, otherwise, you know, it's like reading James Joyce kind of thing, trying to make sense of it all. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I love that, I, uh, that awareness that, that genius can be cultivated and that, you know, you, you also had said earlier about doing this practice, we can connect with what our sense of purpose is and therefore bring in our own genius. Each of us can access our own genius in this way. That's right. The soul knows our higher purpose. It's the repository of all the many lifetimes of experience. And so making that connection really makes it clear what we're here to do. Well, now, soul isn't a word we use a lot on this show. Can you explain to our audience what, what your reference is here? Um, a lot of it was the esoteric um, teachings of Alice Bailey, Helena Boblatsky, and so on. And But I, again, I found that it's all universal, even though some of the terminology might be different. They're all mm -hmm. talking about the same thing, about building this connection to the higher worlds. And it's all through this mental process of meditation. Okay. All right. And, and actually, how would you define purpose? I would say that it's what we're here to do, and it could be anything from raising a family to starting a magazine to starting a big company. It could be um, – we sort of have our distinctions between what's big and what's small, but I don't make those kind of distinctions. It's what we're here to do, what we're here to offer the world. And the soul is the best source of um, that kind of guidance and direction. I always had a sense of what I was supposed to do, just an intuitive sense, and it always kind of kept me moving. But I feel like a, I, I have a, a deeper understanding, I guess is what I'm trying to say, a deeper understanding of what I'm here to contribute. Yeah, I, I would say it's like expressing the greater aspect of, of who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you when people feel like they, they don't have a sense of purpose, it, it really just means that they're they're disconnected with, with their essential self. Right. I think, yeah, I think it's important um, to notice that um, we make no judgment about what that might look like. Yes. Yeah. And it's not about the doer, it's about the beer. And f for those that don't feel strongly about something, we're saying that being connected is is really what it's about, our feeling of connection. And it's connection as consciousness, it's connection as self, it's connection to others. And that may mean that you take care of your children. It may mean that you um, cultivate a flower. It, there, we're, we're getting past where it has to be about what you do. And, what, and it's really more about what you are and how That's you right. show up. 
I recently connected with a, a childhood friend on Facebook that I hadn't seen for 40 some years. And we were talking on the phone and she said, gee, I haven't done all the things that you have done. And then she started to tell me about her life. And I, she's, she's raised children. She cared for her in-laws. And she's just done beautiful, beautiful nurturing of so many people. And I said, you know, that's, that's equally as important. It's not about, you know, what you accomplish in the world. It's about accomplishing what your, what your real purpose is. And it's really clear what you've had to offer and what you have offered so many people. And the yeah. the other thing is is our, our how we express ourselves in the world and it shows up differently at different times. So mm-hmm. while we're raising our children, or if we're you know caring for dying parents, which sometimes dovetails <laughs> on finishing raising your children, you, you're expressing yourself in that way. And then the next phase of life might offer you an opportunity to express express your purpose differently. Maybe that's when you write your great novel or you paint your painting or you experience, you know, creating your your company or something like that. Right, right. I think it's it's about being able to offer value. Right. Absolutely. It's about and that may be a smile with a clerk at the store. And it might be about, you know, writing your great exposition. But it's just about recognizing uh, the wonder of life, right? Mm-hmm. And, and how we each do that in our own ways and allow ourselves to go to those places. And we've gotten in this society pretty mercenary, business-oriented, and there's nothing wrong with those things. But it's what it takes if it's coming at cost of these other things. And we are at cost to our humanity. We are finding that present big time here. And we're asking everyone, offering them a space and a place to go back to what's really present, being present. And it's not those things out there. They will not bring you what you think you want. You can only do that by going within and developing those connections. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And and there's an infiniteness in being in the present moment. Right. That's all there is, right? (laughs) <laughs> I, I was saying that because it's we can get so caught up in the doing and we feel like we don't have time to accomplish all these, these things that we want to do. And yet, if you slow down and are in the present moment, you time is actually malleable. So time <laughs> seems to expand when you're in the present moment. Um, so, Colleen, would you have thought when you were a child that this is where you would find yourself? Well, I tell this funny story in the book that um, I was always a big bookworm. And when I was eight or nine, I read a novel about a girl my age who had her own column in a daily newspaper. Mm. And the cover was really funny. She was bent over a typewriter like she was some, you know, veteran journalist pounding away at the (laughs) keyboard. And there was something about that book that just clicked with me. I read it over and over and I stared at the cover and I somehow knew right in that moment that I was I wanted to be that girl, that I wanted to, some sort of publishing career, and I had it. I mean, it was something that mm. started in high school and just continued. And so um, there's, there's some way that we know, that we do know, and it can come to us at different times. It came to me really early, and I feel fortunate about that. But um, we do know, and some part of our, our beings, we do know. I think it was Pippi Longstocking I was taken with when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think here. <laughs> My life has certainly not fa- followed any course I might have had in mind. That's for sure. What about yours, Joan? <laughs> oh, um, well, I wanted to. I wanted to be president at one time, except I wasn't born in the United States. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's yes. Nice. No, I always knew I'd be a writer, but it didn't show up in the same way. You know, things like that. So that it is the you know the, I know what was coming to my mind there was when you relax into it. When you relax into this conscious awareness, then your your purpose flows out of you effortlessly. It, it, it you know everything comes into everything comes w- into alignment, and you're in agreement with whatever is going on in your life um, when when you're just lined up in that way. That's the inspiration place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is there anything particular that's in your book, Colleen, that um, uh, 
I hate the word technique, I mean, or process or whatever it is that you'd like to share with our listeners about um, if they could take one thing from from our conversation here? Well, there's actually, it's chock full of um, meditations and practices. Okay. There's 12 meditations and two additional um, practices. There's three meditations, mind training meditations, one builds upon the other. But there's also a preliminary step that I'd like to talk about, and I devoted an entire chapter to this. It's called uh, The Refinement of Our Physical, Emotional, and Mental Bodies, and it's really a preparation for us to be able to bring the information down to the brain level, because again, if it doesn't reach the brain, we don't have conscious awareness of it, and um, we need to purify the body and quiet our minds and emotions. If we're ill, if we're tired, if we have mental or emotional static, it actually makes it hard for our brains to register the higher information. It repels the more subtle uh, trains of thought. And what I discovered in researching this is that refinement practices are part of all spiritual traditions. And even though the methods vary from tradition to tradition, the requirements and goals are actually exactly the same purity of body, control of the emotions, and stability of mind. And so in the book, I included the refinement practices that have helped me the most. One of the problems I had, and this is a very common thing, is that I had, I had a lot of trouble quieting down my emotional body. And Jack Kornfield talks about this a lot. He said that when he first started to teach meditation, he discovered that at least half of his students were unable to master even the basic concentration techniques because they had so much unresolved emotional issues. And I found this to be absolutely true that anything unresolved just starts to bubble up. And for me, I had people that I really needed to forgive. And I got so frustrated. You know, I wanted to meditate more and more deeply. And, you know, all this stuff would come up and I'd just go off on these mental tangents thinking about this or that. I started to work with a really wonderful spiritual healer named Stephen Lumiere, and he gave me a prescription, so to speak. He gave me three meditations to do every day, one on loving kindness, one on forgiveness, and one on compassion. And as I did this day after day after day, I started to quiet down. I became a more compassionate, more forgiving person, and I found it easier to let go of some of this anger that I've been carrying around for so long. And when I did that, I really started to quiet down enough to be able to meditate more deeply. So that's a really essential thing. And I, one of the things about writing this book, I was learning about the subject as I wrote, which was good in a way because I could talk about my own experience at each step. It actually took longer than it would have if I would have known, known everything and then sat down to write. But I was able to kind of take the reader along with me, and, and I wanted to be honest about my own failings and my own difficulties. And um, it made a huge, huge difference in my life. And it really was the start of me, me being able to quiet myself down enough to meditate more deeply. I love your language. I was, I'm hearing purity, which would be, a, you know, a tradition term, and, and static in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and quieting the mind. I love, I, I can hear all your influences at play there. It's just wonderful. <laughs> And, the thing that's yeah, the most yeah. um, exciting to me was to see, to find this over and over and over and over in all these different traditions. I didn't have mm -hmm. a background in world religion, so I, I scoured libraries day after day after day looking for the books to, to, to try to understand how how universal this, this teaching is and how it shows up in all these other traditions. And I wanted it to be credible to a wider audience, like I said, beyond the people mm -hmm. that usually read yeah. esoteric books. So I thought if I framed it in this way, that it would it would be easier to understand and to accept. Yeah. Well, do we feel like we, we're at our time, Joan? We're, we're, we, it does kind of feel like that. Uh, and because yeah. I, I'm aware the other questions I want to ask you are more sort of practical questions questions um i can go ahead and do this for, uh, there's a little bouncing we have two minutes so um the I, your website for people who are just tuning in is spiritualtelepathy.net and this book spiritual telepathy ancient techniques to access the wisdom of your soul is available on amazon barnes and noble bam.com google play ibounds and uh, ibooks and indiebound um do you have any any book signings right now or any events that you'd like to alert people to? Um, I'm going to the Bay Area again in the um, early summer 
And so I'll be putting those um, events up on my website. I do have um, the other interviews on my website, and people can read the introduction to my book there as well. All right. Well, I think maybe it's time to come back out of heart then. Okay. And let's just notice everyone. She, Colleen has brought up some wonderful information for us about ourselves and different ways to look at things. And she's giving you an excellent book that can, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, with these disciplines and ways of thinking, uh, some good meat meat on the bones there to enjoy. So just notice how you're feeling right now in this moment. There we go. And just bring your awareness back a little bit. And that this is our practice. If you do this every day, take the time. There's many different ways to enlightenment. It's all about enlightenment. And it's unique for each of us. And just notice that emotional terrain now. Bring your awareness back. Yeah, seems a little different. It's a little quieter there. And then bring it back further into your heart, physical heart. There we go. And then as you allow your awareness to come to street level, you can go about your day in time. The only thing that will change is your awareness, your level of awareness. You're always in your heart. You're always in as consciousness. You are always there. And there we go. Yeah, lots of shifting going on out there, Joan. All right. Yeah. All right. Well... We are going to a commercial break now, so just to let you know that we're going to a commercial break, but stay tuned because we have been talking about spiritual telep- telepathy with Colleen Morrow, and we've got a few more things to say right after our break. Would you like a fresh approach to the challenges you're dealing with? Janet Barrett is a subtle energy empath. Feeling the energies present in your myths and language, she offers a supportive, non judgmental viewpoint. Experience new ways to relate to and release the energies in those stories. Receive a $25 discount on your first session. Email Janet for an appointment at JanetB at JanetAndBeyond.com. Come explore with Janet. New possibilities for a joy-filled life. You are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan. I'm along here with Janet. And we've been talking about spiritual telepathy with Colleen Morrow. Hmm, that's nice. That's nice, very nice. Is there anything you would like to leave our listeners with, Colleen? Well, I would just love to uh, tell people to experiment with uh, meditations in this book, that it changed my life, and that I think it'll change theirs too, that it's actually not a huge time commitment. I did a workshop recently, and everybody kind of groaned when they talked about how hard it was to meditate every day, (laughs) but that really a big shift can happen in just 10 or 15 minutes as long as you're consistent. Uh, one thing I found is that I had to be very careful with my technology, and I and I found this to be true with the people that I had in my workshop, too. I leave my phone downstairs and my mm-hmm. um, computer off because it's just so tempting to want to get out of bed and start looking at our email and so on. It's so distracting. And so I, I sort of go out, go to great lengths to make sure that I don't um, have the ability to slide over and start looking at my email. I, I make sure that I have my, <laughs> my meditation space that's far away from the rest of everything. Temptation, huh? <laughs> that that is great. Well, well, you have to value the the connection with ourselves, maybe just a little bit more than the connection with the world out there. Maybe that helps. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, thank you for joining us today, Colleen. It's been a wonderful conversation, and your your book and your work just sounds fascinating. And, thank you for and, having me. Yeah, and all that information. Thank you for sharing, and we appreciate all that work. <laughs> <laughs> all that study, all that exploration you've done, because it sounds like you've really made this tangible for people. And that's what it's all about. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. I enjoy talking to you both. Thank you. Yeah. And just to let our listeners know that we've been talking with Colleen Morrow. She's the author of Spiritual Telepathy, Ancient Techniques to Access the Wisdom of Your Soul. It introduces us to a more advanced form of intuitive perception that allows us to access the wisdom and guidance of our own souls and beyond that to the universal or divine mind. And as she mentioned earlier, she's going to be in the Bay Area soon. And you can find out more information about that and also how to purchase her book is on her website, spiritualtelepathy.net. And before we go, Janet, why don't we let people know how to add, connect with us outside of the show? Well, there's lots of ways to connect with us. And we want to be sure and mention that we're changing our time, oh, right? Yes. Date and time. So, everyone, uh, we're, we're moving our show to Sunday, starting this coming Sunday, 7 o'clock on BBS Network, and uh, we'll look forward to having you join us there. We're going to announce the week before what our topic coming up will be, and that would be a great time for you to email us your questions and things so that we can answer them on the show ahead of time. And next week, we're going to interview each of us. Joan and, Joan's going <laughs> to interview Janet, and Janet's going to interview Joan. So if you have any questions you'd like to know about us uh, that we can be sure and, and get, the, get the skinny on, we'll do that. And the different ways to get a hold of us are through our websites, off our blogs. We both produce blogs. Um, I'm Janet. Uh, Life in the Beyond, it's Janet. Oh, my gosh. I, my name, those names are your, gone. Your, your website is <laughs> JanetInBeyond.com. And actually, if you go to her website, and you will find <laughs> 10 top tips. If you give her your email, uh, her, she'll give you 10 top tips, which are really 29 top tips for enjoying yeah. life. And Jan Janet also owns, uh, she she does meetups every Tuesday and Thursday in Portland there. And you can find out that at meetup.com, Conscious Conversations with Janet. My website is joan-nukem.com. And you can find out about my meetups in Seattle, Tacoma, Bellevue, and Olympia. And also you can go there and uh, answer a quiz to discover what your life purpose is and uh, also, um, I, <laughs> um, that I have uh, 12 weeks to transformation. You can find out about that course there as well. And our, great things. Take that. Take her. Take her purpose, guys. Her purpose. Take my quiz. purpose. Find take out your purpose. purpose. <laughs> that purpose quiz is really fun because you know one thing about us is we change. You know, hopefully we evolve. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, you know, that's a judgment. It's nice to be different. It's nice to be unexpected. That has to have real value in society and us today. And um, you may be thinking different than what you think you are thinking. <laughs> so, so take the purpose. It's the purpose, you know. Get on track. Figure out what's what's after you. And awesome. Joan's quiz will help you that way. Totally recommend it. <sighs> Are you there or did I lose somebody? I'm here. Uh, that was, there was a bizarreness that just happened in my universe. Uh, so <laughs> back back to... The day's going, right? <laughs> I, it, it's been very, very strange. I, I can say that it's, you know, we're, we've got some spiritual weather going on. We're coming up to eclipses and things like that. I did want to remind folks that if you want to meet us face to face and you are going to be in the Pacific Northwest, that we are at Emerald Spirals Expo on March 26th at the Kent Commons. And you can find out more at their website, which is emeraldspiral.com. You can also uh, meet us in Portland on April 2nd and 3rd uh, at the Body Mind Spirit Expo in Portland. And that is www.bmse.net. Uh, we're on Facebook. If you go to Facebook, and uh, we're Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Janet is also on Facebook at Janet Barrett, and I'm on Facebook both as Joan Marjorie Newcomb, and also my fan page is uh, Joan Newcomb. And we are on Twitter at Joan and Janet, or you can follow me on Twitter for a completely different ride, and that's Joan Newcomb at Joan Newcomb. Uh, and 
yes. it's amazing to me how we have all been reduced down to letters like this addresses or what, what whatever you the titles you I know it's, it's, trying to bring heart back into this and <laughs> and the thing is is that it just happens to be that titles and 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 websites and all are, are ways of people to communicate with us and connect with us outside <laughs> of you know outside of the show and that's that's the reason why that that it's a way of oh, connecting more deeply with us because if we didn't have different names or different identities then we'd all just be one and uh, there wouldn't be a radio show <laughs> I, I've been so beginning excited. to say that our show's on YouTube as well. So if you if you like YouTube, you can just binge watch us uh, oh, yeah. uh, at our show on YouTube. <laughs> you binge listen. There you go. Sure, that's, that's, that's what it is. Can so, I tell people something? Sure. It sure. just occurred to me that I may actually be coming up to the uh, Pacific Northwest. Oh, cool. Oh. After yeah, after the Bay Area, it's not certain, but that's a that's a possibility. It would be in June sometime. Oh, please let us know. We, I sure we'd love will. To, we'll pass that information on to everyone. Well, it looks like our time is up, everybody. So we want to thank everyone for joining us this time. And wherever you are, we're here. You were there, too. <laughs> right. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan Newcomb. And I'm Janet Barrett. And thank you for joining us as Consciousness Expressing and Evolving. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Thanks so much for helping to co-create the show. No matter whether you're tuning in live or listening on demand, you energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Tune in next Wednesday for another great show at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and 10 p.m. UTC.